Northern California's Redwood National Park is known today as one of the most beautiful and renowned parks that exist in modern day. Many people enjoy visiting the Redwoods in order to relax and briefly forget about their problems. Some may take these magnificent trees for granted. This should not be the case because these redwood trees have been through many hardships throughout the past century. Many of these struggles began with the end of the Industrial Revolution. Near the in end of the Industrial Revolution, the use of mass production and factories led to the depletion of natural resources and eventually permanently damaged the environment. The main reason for this depletion was due to excessive deforestation. Much of this deforestation occurred in Northern California. In 1917, Save the Redwoods League, also known as the STR League, promoted the protection and preservation of the redwoods in Northern California. This saved more than 135,000 acres of redwood trees and raised $125 million to protect national parks. As the public slowly became aware of the essential damage in which the Industrial Revolution had caused, environmentalists and conservationists began to develop ideas for this growing issue. Environmentalist John Muir stated that nature was sacred and that humans should look but not develop upon nature. It turns out, Muir's work paid off because the president at the time, Theodore Roosevelt, signed the Conservation Act. This is a law that created five national parks. On August 25, 1916, President Woodrow Wilson signed and enforced the National Park Service Act, also known as the NPS Act. This organic act stated that The service thus established shall promote and regulate the use of the federal areas known as national parks, monuments, and reservations by such means and measures as conform to the fundamental purpose of the said parks, monuments, and reservations, which purpose is to conserve the scenery and the natural and historic objects and the wildlife therein, and to provide for the enjoyment of the same in such manner and by such means as will leave them unimpaired for the enjoyment of future generations. A lot of these places uh, were in do or die situations. By the time the preservationist effort prevails, uh, some 93% of the redwood forest had been lost. I said to myself, I will start a campaign immediately to make a public park of this place. In 1917, Stephen Mather was appointed as the first director of the National Park Service. Mather's first assignment as head of MPS was to persuade three accomplished naturalists to investigate the redwood forests of Northern California. He believed that magnificent scenery should be considered first in establishing a national park, and made efforts to have new parks established before the lands were developed for other purposes. As Assistant Secretary of Interior and Head of National Park Service, Mather did his best to manage the parks. Mather also promoted the creation of the National Park to Park Highway. With this, he believed that once the public had visited the parks, they would become full supporters of the so-called agency, and therefore would need a road in order to revisit the parks. Due to the effects of the Industrial Revolution, logging had become a booming industry. In 1850, the start of widespread coastal logging was introduced to the industry. In 1879, the Timber and Stone Act was signed by Congress. This act authorized thousands of acres of redwood timberland to be sold to private parties. Due to Mather's idea of building roads to the national parks, an increasing number of urbanized areas began to intrude upon the coast of Northern California's redwood trees, although no park had been formed in that area at that time. As urbanization increased, the Redwood Highway opened up its area to logging. These ancient redwood trees became threatened as excessive logging began to diminish their population. As a result, conservationists felt threatened about the idea of the logging industry moving in upon such a sacred area. Throughout his career, Stephen Mather influenced many people who felt the responsibility to protect the wilderness. Among these people were conservationists Madison Grant of the New York Zoological Society, John C. Merriam of the Berkeley University of California, and Henry Fairfield Osborne of the American Museum of Natural History. To conduct a study, John C. Merriam began to compare Northern California's forests to other healthier forests, such as Big Basin Redwood State Park in Santa Cruz. He noticed that the redwoods in Northern California were not as healthy compared to others due to excessive logging and an increase in urbanization. Together, the three conservationists decided to embark on an expedition to the redwoods. That night in the redwoods, they were astounded by the fact that such great beauty actually existed. Finally, after many days of arguing, the conservationists came to a conclusion and decided that it was their responsibility to protect the redwood forests. 
They felt that it was a necessity for future generations to experience such natural beauty. Later the next day, a meeting was held in secrecy. They felt the need to do this in order to protect themselves from harm. This was because conservationists and naturalists were not yet looked at positively by the public eye. The main reason was because the public was not yet educated enough about environmental issues to have a proper understanding. After their secret meeting, the conservationists decided that it was their responsibility to save the North Coast California Redwood Forest. Each conservationist felt personally driven because each member had witnessed logging devastation along the Redwood Highway. Each member donated $100 towards funding for a national park. This became known as the Save the Redwoods League, which advocated for environmental rights and protected the redwoods. The foundation of this league influenced other conservationists throughout the U.S. In 1919, Newton B. Drury became the executive secretary of the League. During this time, he guided the League into rapid growth and recognition. Later on, he became the head director of the National Park Service. His devotion to conservation protected the national park resources from being exploited during World War II. Although the foundation of the STR League altered the course of history, it does not protect the redwoods forever. Many of the redwood lands that are already protected by these laws in national parks also face threats in modern day. An example of this can be seen from devastating budget cuts due to the shutdown of the government. These budget cuts ultimately lead to national park shutdowns. However, in the end, over 60% of the redwoods in California state redwood parks have been protected by this organization. Humboldt Redwoods State Park and Redwood National Park have benefited greatly due to the responsibility conservationists assumed during the 19th and 20th century while advocating for environmental rights.